welcome subscribers thank you new subscribers for following liking our videos sharing them uh with people that resonate with you and for resonating with our videos the message is for you if you resonated with you uh you can support us at our website there in the link you can also donate at our cash app you can also donate at our cash app and you can follow us on social media which is tiktok facebook and instagram you can follow us there i had to come in and talk about this stuff with td jakes and these these new discoveries we have with this human trafficking because it all ties together back to the moors and i thought you said how is that ties together all of it ties together you know i'm going to show you a few clips here and then i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna talk about how this all ties together how this all leads back even the activity that's going on uh with the i would say the hyper homosexuality all that hyper homosexuality even that ties back to the ancient times you know i can tie all this back to the ancient times and we're going to talk about that and that's what you're seeing so if you, you're wondering like, what am I seeing here? What's going on here? You know, you're seeing these patriarchs from Ur. You're seeing th these Moors that come on the scene and they bring their Babylonian rituals and things that they learned from Egypt, but they tweaked it. Again, they got this from the matriarch culture. And again, they were tweaking it for the patriarch culture. But again, this wasn't designed for the patriarchs. This type of uh, rituals was only divine for the matriarchs and not the patriarchs. But we're going to go in, I'm going to look at these videos, and then we're going to break down, you know, my insights, my divine insights. And I'm going to connect some things together. And maybe, you know, uh, it'll give you more insight of what you're looking at, too. So let me uh, just let you watch the clip. That's why I'm back with that Daily Hip Hop Tea. It's T Tom. Guys, this situation involving alleged text describing TD Jakes as a power bottom at Diddy S parties is crazy. If you guys are unaware, there's a TikToker that is going viral for saying that Cassie is working with the feds. There's also a chain of emails going around describing TD Jakes and Diddy's relationships. They said that TD Jakes would frequent Diddy S parties and that he was actually described as a power bottom. She has turned over substantial amounts of evidence to the feds. I'm told that after Cassie had a long conversation with her lawyers, she finally was convinced to give up the videotapes and audio recordings that contain footage of S parties and other private gatherings that feature some pretty powerful and prominent people. Also told that multiple male escorts corroborated the fact that TD Jakes have slept with multiple men at Diddy's parties and abroad. And they refer to him as being a power bottom. Although I did not find any alleged emails describing TD Jakes as a power bottom at the Diddy parties, I did find an interview from Jaguar Wright who was actually previously linked to Diddy, um, and she actually described T.D. Jakes and Diddy's relationship. I'm going to go ahead and put a clip of it here. Why do you think T.D. Jakes was at Puff Daddy's birthday party? To be at a Diddy party? I don't know. I mean, if Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Money or sex. That's all that happens at Diddy parties. Money and sex. I hope it was for money because arguing about who's going to put the strap on on is that can be a very uncomfortable situation. You know, we're going to pray on it. Praise the Lord. Jaguar had a lot to say about the situation, talking about they arguing about who going to put on a strap on child. She did a little bit much. All this information is alleged. This is also crazy because Christian Keys recently came forth and said that there was a person in the industry who had great notoriety and who was beloved was actually harassing him and had been harassing him for quite some time. People started to begin to speculate that it was Tyler Perry, but Christian Keys actually liked a tweet ruling Tyler Perry out of that entire situation. Now, he has not liked any tweets excluding T.D. Jakes from the BS. So that is why people are thinking that it might possibly be T.D. Jakes. I personally don't know. And like I said before, all this information is alleged. I don't know if T.D. Jakes is necessarily innocent because sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, I'm curious to know what you guys think about this entire situation. T.D. Jakes and his team have yet to comment on any of these allegations. Um, let me know your thoughts below. Peace. What's up, it's your you logged in or come in out of concern some of you come in to hear what I'm going to say 
All of you who expect me to address a lie, you can log off. I will not use this sacred day and this sacred pulpit to address a lie when I have a chance to preach a truth. I will stand straight up, head up, back straight, and preach the unadulterated and fallible word of God. Because that is what the pulpit is for. But there will be a time. <laughs> So you can stop dragging people and arguing with people and fighting and just log off. All you do is just hit the button. Right there. Log off. There is no show here. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter number one, some of you logged in or you or nobody. Because I know who I am. I didn't, that, that, that ain't what this is about. You can think whatever you want to think. I don't care. I came to do my job. I came to prophesy as I was commanded. I came to hear the master say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Okay, I know this that is hard to believe, but there is an unveiling going to happen uh, on these televangelists, all these churches, all this human trafficking, all this stuff is going to come to the forefront. And within the next, I say the two or three years, you're going to see the unveiling happen. You're going to be able to look up under the dress of the church and see all this stuff that they have going on. They've been having going on for centuries. They've been had going on for centuries. And I know a lot of you say, what is up with this homosexuality? What is going on with this hyper homosexuality? I like to call it hyper homosexuality because it's a high rate uh, than usual. You know, we've always had different people with different sexuality, but this is hyper. This is at an all-time uh, rate, especially with the patriarchs and, and rule. But if we can go back and we can look at Sodom and Gomorrah, they talked about this. The Sumerians talked about, again, we're talking about these patriarchs who kept their stories intact when they left out of Egypt. So this is their story when we go back to the Bible, when we look at Sodom and Gomorrah. And you ask me, when I look at Sodom and Gomorrah and I look at uh, the Sumerian, the separation between the Sumerians and Egypt, I'm thinking that that was one territory and that broke with the patriarchs in and in Sumerian and the matriarchs ending up in Egypt. Okay, I, I really believe that there was a, a, a real break there between the matriarchs and the patriarchs uh, when it comes to knowing more about these patriarchal moors. And so you can see in their book, they talk about how Lot, he was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Again, they tried that, that you know, this is not the first time this happened where these patriarchs, they took over the matriarch culture, and this happened. This happened when they first took over the matriarch culture. Uh, and because the matriarchs, they had a low supply of women. See, they're not going to talk about that because women start pulling away from men because of this rise in patriarchy and, and war. But there was a low supply of women. So you can't even imagine, like I tell you, you can't even imagine what women had to go through when they were being overthrown by this patriarchy. 